Alright folks, for this assignment you are going to be creating a drawing that is focused specifically on the idea of negative space. Um, please watch the attached videos to the, the YouTube videos on the Google Classroom for this lesson to give you a more in-depth idea of what negative space is. Quick run, rundown of negative space. In any, any still life setup that you have or any, any artistic drawing that you're dealing with, um, the negative space in a drawing is always going to be the areas that are empty around your subject. So in this particular drawing, your subject is the bottle with the stool, the pitcher, and the box sitting on top of the table. So to do a negative space drawing, what it's really asking you to do is it's asking you to flip your, um, your train of thought and your perspective a little bit. To do a negative space drawing, you're actually not drawing the bottle and the stool and the pitcher and the box. Instead, you are focusing on drawing the contour lines the edge of the bottle, the edge of the stool, and the edge of the pitcher in the box by going in and drawing the empty spaces around each of these pieces. What this allows you to do is it's a good planning exercise for when you get into more um, detailed still life drawings. It allows you to be able to map out the approximate size of each of the objects, and it allows you to go in and really pay attention to the spatial relationships of all of these gaps. If you go in and you focus on the spatial relationships in, of, of the empty spaces, of the negative space, um, it will it will trick your brain and it will make the drawing process easier for you. But you gotta like shift your shift your thinking. You're not actually drawing the objects. You're drawing the empty spaces around the objects. So really, what does this mean? This means that to create these drawings, it's almost like you're making a silhouette. If you had a spotlight on this setup and the light was shining in, instead of drawing the actual objects that are coming through, what you would do is you would be drawing the shadow that's being, um, that's being projected by that light. In other words, with a negative space drawing, you will not see the difference between the picture and the difference between the leg, or the difference between the leg, and the difference between the cube. All of this in a negative space drawing ends up coming together and blending together. So in order to do this, if you are, if you are at sick and at home, um, go ahead and just do this drawing directly in your sketchbook. So the first thing that you've got to do is you've got to figure out the approximate size of each of the objects in the piece. So the easiest way to do that would be to find one of the objects to measure it out. So if my, if the bottle that I'm drawing, I could, maybe I can use the pencil, you could use a ruler, you could use your fingers to get that approximate size of this. So if my, if my bottle is about this size, then that means that in my drawing, however big I draw the bottle, I know that the stool is going to be one, two, to almost three, just about the three, the, the, the three bottle size. So the stool from this vantage point is going to be three times the size of the bottle. So that's the first thing you need to do is figure out, okay, what are the proportions of each of the objects in here? When I say proportion, I'm not talking about placement in proportion as things that are closer or bigger and things that are farther away end up being smaller. That's, 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 not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the actual size size relationship between each of the objects that come through here. So if I know that the stool is three times the size of the bottle, on my piece of paper I would go in and I'd say, okay, if this is where the top of my bottle is going to be, and this is where the bottom of my bottle is going to be, then I know from that point that I can go in, here's one, here's two, I'll slide up my paper, and here's three. That means the if this is the top of my bottle and the top of the stool, that means the bottom edge of the stool, or this edge of the um, of the stool right here, is going to fit 
at about this proportion of ratio here. Let me raise this up so hopefully you can see. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be hard for you to see the whole thing at once, but I'm gonna do my best. So now once you get the the basic proportions in your drawing down, what you what you don't want to do is you don't want to have you don't want to be like, oh I'm doing a negative space drawing, so I'm gonna do the whole thing and on this big piece of paper I'm gonna draw it like two inches by two inches. The smaller you draw, the act actually the harder it is to go. And so once you get your basic, the map out of the basic size of your pieces, the next thing that you're going to end up doing is you're going to start with the bottle on the top. And the trick now is to just go in and allow your eye and your hand to follow through so you get the contour line. I'm going to create a drawing that's going to go down this edge of the bottle like so. As soon as I hit right here, I'm going to come in and I'm going to extend this over like this. And then I'll bring it all the way down. I'm just getting that outside contour of this shape. So that's step number one. So looking at it like you, if you're working from home, you can go ahead and print this picture out to work from. So I'm going to start off at the top of my bottle right here. This comes down. I've got that little piece of a wire that's sticking out to get to the cork. That comes down to the neck of the bottle. Nice, smooth, elegant curve. Just a little bit straighter. I want it to be a little bit straighter there, so draw lightly. It's okay if you have to go in and erase. Coming in on the other side, and notice I've got that wire curve that comes around like this, so I'm going to get that shape to come in. And because I'm drawing the negative space, I've got to pay attention to that gap where you can see through. So that comes in like so. Here's the bulb of the cork, and then symmetrical balance. Whatever I do on this side of the bottle, I'm going to try to have that come in at that same rate. So right now, here's where my bottle is coming in. I'm not worried about any of the details on the inside because this is just a straight positive and negative space drawn. Now, from right here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to make my edge that comes across like so. Get the edge of the stool, comes down like this at this point of this corner. Then, now before I extend this down, notice the bottom of the front leg is the one, is the line that's coming in right here. I'm going to look at this edge of that back leg, and that is back and further up. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to go ahead and put a mark right there that tells me that that's where that back edge is going to go. And it comes straight across. This edge is a little bit higher than that one. So I'm going to come up like that and just map in where each of these legs are going to go. Now I'm going to go in and extend my line to come all the way down like so. Meeting that hatch mark that I put in to show where that leg is going to end up stopping. Pay attention to your quality of line, good, smooth, good, smooth lines that are coming in. I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the same thing over on the right hand side. This comes down, here's the edge of the stool, comes into that inner lip just a little bit, and then this comes down, I'm coming down to this side. It flares out just a little bit. I don't like that angle being so hard, especially when I compare that angle here. So I'm actually going to move this in just a little bit. It's okay to change mid-drawing. Totally fine to change your mind on where things are going. Just want to try to get this as realistic as you possibly can. It comes down like that. So now I've got the outside of the stool. Now I'm going to come in, I'm going to follow this contour line up to that corner. So this contour line comes up to that corner, and now I've got that ring. So I'm going to go in and I'm just drawing the edge of the ring, and about, about two-thirds of the way down to this, to that, that leg right here. I'm going to bring this down, and right at about here is where I meet the box. Now notice, now I'm going to draw that straight edge of the box coming down. 
that corner is just below that. So that corner is going to come down just below this edge here. Then I've got a that angle that comes down to get that linear perspective to come through. And then right here is where I'm hitting this leg that comes down like so. So this is going to come down like this. I think I want to shorten this up just so you guys can see a little bit better what I've got going on. This edge comes up like this. This edge comes up, and then I hit the, at that edge of this box coming down like that to that corner. So that comes in, and then I hit this corner that goes up like so. That corner goes up, and now I'm intersecting this part of the ring. That ring comes up and really curves, and then I'm hitting this edge of this leg so that it comes down like this. I'll go in and clean up my lines a little bit, and now I'm going to start focusing on this negative space, this empty area here. Don't worry about the table for right now. We'll get into to how the table edges are going to come about um, a little bit later in other still lives. This edge comes up and slowly curves around like this. So it comes up, slowly curves around like so. Here's the rest of this box that comes up like this. Intersects with this curve. The curve of this ring comes up like that. The box extends just a little bit further, a little bit further up. And then I've got this edge that goes back until I hit the beginning of the pitcher. Pitcher is big and fat on the front side. Comes up to a cylinder with the spout. And then right about here is where I hit this leg again. This leg just go, or oh no, this is the back leg. Sorry, sorry, I'm totally confused. That comes up like this. And this wraps around, and then I hit the rest of this leg. It's thinner at the top, and then it gets fatter at the base. Now I've gone in, and I've completed this whole section of the negative space. Now I'm going to look at this little piece here. This line shows... I'm going to clean that edge up just a little bit. I don't like how that looks. So I've got just a little bit of a gap between. So here's this gap. This comes down like this, getting a little bit wider. That intersects with the pitcher. This line right here is the continuation of this leg at the base. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to make this leg much wider because it's closer to me. This intersects and goes like that. I'm so close to being done. Now right here, I've got the back edge of the pitcher that comes down. Here's the handle. And now I've intersected back with this leg again. Goes straight down, and now I'm back at this edge of the box that comes across. This goes down for this corner, and now I'm hitting this ring like so until I hit the edge of this leg, and then this leg goes up. Uh, I shouldn't have drawn that. That's going to be something that I'm going to erase. And then I've got this inside ring that comes through. And here is my drawing of negative space. Okay, so this is a rough approximation. Now, in order to get contrast, I want you to go in using a 4B or a 6B pencil, and you're going to start shading all of the interior of your negative space in black. So this will be black, this will be black, this will be black, this will be black, this will be black coming down like so, this will be black coming down like so, and all of this will be black on the inside. Then on the outside, I'll have just a little bit of a ring of black that comes up like this, going all the way around, and then a quick gradient value going out. It's like an ombre effect.
effect where you've got that color fade coming through. So this is where you're going to go in and use your circular shading to be able to get this out. Fading out like this, fading out like this. So, for this drawing, if you're working from home and you're not in class, just go ahead and make sure that you're using, doing all of this in the, um, in, in your sketchbook. You can turn this in when you get back. Oh, I forgot to have that little, that little gap in the handle there. The real thing that I want you to pay attention to is negative space is the empty area, positive space is the front area. Your drawing is going to look like this. It's going to look like a silhouette. You should not be able to tell where one object, one piece of positive space, goes in front of the other piece of positive space. You're not going in and actually drawing the, the vase so that it looks like the vase is sitting on the cube and so that, the, that the, the legs are in front of it. That's not what you're focusing on. You are only focusing on the negative space, the empty areas around it. If you have any questions, definitely watch the videos that are posted with this and email me at jtgetmuhs.com and I will definitely help you out. Okay, good luck.